to the very first episode of Geeky Gentleman Holiday Month. I am Sid Partu. Joining me today is Rasko of Rasko's My Life. Hello, Rasko. Hi. Um, I don't have a clever intro. <laughs> I, I, it, it's so fucking funny. The first year Steve was on Geeky Gentleman is when we started doing theme months, and he wanted to do Holiday Month, and I was like, no, I don't want to fucking do Holiday, holiday Month. And then the second year... It was like, come on, let's do holiday month this year. It was like, okay, fine, we'll do holiday month. And then, like, the week before we were about to start, Sims and Mesh was like, dude, I, can't, I need a month off. I just, I got too much shit going on. I'm like, okay. So he, he didn't come for holiday month. And here we are, year three, doing holiday month. Or year two, doing holiday month. And no Steve Baxi. So I don't have a clever intro for holiday month. I've just promised it to people now, so here we are. Um, Rasko, what are we discussing this week? talking about the live action Grinch movie. And you just sound so fucking ec- ecstatic about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rasko, what a- Ah, fuck it. Yeah, I asked you last time. Everyone, before we get into the topic, I want you, the listener, to know that you can download episodes of Geek Gentlemen. There's a link in the description. Download this episode so you can put it on your listening device, listen on the go, in the car, on a plane, hunting birds, or on a train. I don't know. Um, you can listen to Geeky Gentlemen wherever you are. If you want to listen to old episodes of Geeky Gentlemen, please check out the Geeky Gentlemen playlist. Leave a comment on the, on an episode, and I'll upload it to the website for you. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, so Rasko, what did you think of the live action How the Grinch Stole Christmas? I have like a weird relationship with this movie because. I've seen, I, I, the most vivid memory I ever have of watching this film before watching it for this review was when I watched it at like my grandparents' house in like Tennessee one time around Christmas when we were down there like because of Christmas and like it was when I watched it as a child for some reason like I pieced it together in my head incorrectly where I like was making up events that didn't happen in the movie in my head as a child. <laughs> And then didn't watch the movie for years after that. So I just kind of went on with life thinking things that didn't actually happen in the movie happened in it. And it's like, this movie, because of that, has like left this weird like tainted memory on in my past where like, I hate this movie, it creeps me out. Really? Yes. Like, what about it specifically creeps you out? Everything about this movie scares the crap out of me. Their faces are all so ugly and creepy. No, I agree. The, the fucking Who makeup looks terrifying. Like, <sighs> they try to make the Grinch look scary. No one's as scary as fucking Dad Who, right? Yeah, nobody. Yeah, I agree. It's it's the most hideous fucking makeup. And, like, people go, oh, well, the girl looks cute. The girl's the only one with fucking lips. It's <laughs> creepy. Um, yeah, I agree. The the who's look fucked up. Uh, the only thing that looks more fucked up are Thing 1 and Thing 2 by the time we get to the live-action Cat in the Hat. I uh, hate that movie as well. Well, everyone hates that movie. People actually enjoy this one. Um, let me say, Grinch is my favorite holiday character. Uh... I just really, really like the Grinch. Um, just cool look to him. I loved the Dr. Seuss book growing up. Um, I, I enjoyed the original cartoon. When this movie came out as a child, I enjoyed it. But, you know, 
I was a child, so I was allowed to be wrong about things. Looking back on it now, I watched it again today for this, and it has things, like it has moments here and there that I find funny, but not that I should find funny for the most part. I, I feel like this has a really messed up tone that really, really fucks with it, because we have this thing with a lot of modern children's movies where we try to make them more family movies that, like, basically we just try to make them tolerable for adults yeah. by putting in, you know, clever little pop culture references and stuff. And in some cases I'm fine with that, but I don't feel like that's appropriate to do with Dr. Seuss. And this does a sickening amount of it. Like, I remembered that there were a couple off-color jokes but not the number that I saw in this. Yeah. Like, the Grinch is left outside as a baby, and he's left outside a swingers party. And that's fucked up. As just an in-joke for parents. Like, that's, that's not something that belongs in a Dr. Seuss movie. <laughs> Dr. Seuss is meant to be 100% for children. And to do those little wink-wink, nudge-nudge moves to the parents, it's just, it's it's not the right fucking format for it. If you want to make a kid's movie like that, or family movie like that, that's fine. Don't do it with the fucking Dr. S Dr. Seuss books. Yeah. Um, I find it kind of insulting to Dr. Seuss. Yeah, I mean, like, a Dr. Seuss movie could, in tone, be very similar to, like, a Pixar movie, I mean... It should be. Yeah, like, you could... There's no reason for a Dr. Seuss movie to be PG. Yeah, you can get, like, you can have, like, serious themes and stuff, because uh, Pixar movies have that. But, like, yeah, you shouldn't get, with the humor, sh there's a certain level that the humor really shouldn't uh, align. I guess it shouldn't cross. If if you want to do justice to the spirit of Dr. Of Dr. Seuss. And that's the thing, is, like, Dr. Seuss didn't really have, like, jokes in in his stuff. Like, there were, like comedic things there was humor in it but it wasn't like gags yeah. it was just general weirdness and silliness um and so this this really feels like a very poor representation of it that being said i have tremendous respect for jim carrey for what he was able to deliver in this role i'll agree with that actually <laughs> because God damn that makeup, but like you, you like you know. Okay, that was a lot of work to put on that makeup and and still perform. Like you know that intuitively. You have no idea though, because Jim Carrey had to receive training from a former CIA agent in how to resist torture in order to put on that makeup and act as the Grinch in the movie. Wait, really? How? Why? Because of just, like, how... Like, the first day of putting on the makeup, it, it took eight hours to apply it all, and he went straight to his trailer from the makeup tray and kicked his foot through a wall and told Ron Howard that he couldn't fucking do the movie. Because, it, like, the way he described it, it was like being buried alive slowly. <laughs> and so he had to... In order to, to get through the process of putting on the makeup and... and walking around and just being so physically uncomfortable the whole time in order to deal with the, the process of the makeup, he had to receive training in how to survive torture. Which is crazy. Uh, I imagine it's, like, really claustrophobic. Yeah, exactly. Because if you think about it, like, it's like layers of layers of just material all over his body. Mm -hmm. and like, yeah, exactly. So I have I have tremendous respect for Jim Carrey and what he's able to pull off here. And I think that's the only reason that this movie works on any level is Jim Carrey. Um, and, and even then, he does get a little little intoler intolerable throughout it at times. Mm -hmm. At a certain point, the jokes and the riffing stop being entertaining and it just gets, like, annoying. Yeah, this movie for me, it's just like sensory overload of, it's, 
it just it's just like in your face all the time. That's like how I can describe this movie. It's just really like it's like stressful for me to watch this film, honestly. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's weird cuz generally speaking from just an aesthetic standpoint, I really like sensory overload stuff. I like them bombarding you I with agree. shit. I agree. I agree. So that you can't keep up with what's going on on screen sometimes and it gives you reasons to go back. Like, it's one of the things I love about um, the movie Moulin Rouge. It's not a good movie, but the sensory overload in some of those scenes are fucking awesome. Yeah, um, I agree. And and so, usually I like stuff like that, but not not this. Like, the set design, it's it's too dark with what they decide to end it up with color gradient-wise, but the set design looks really good. And I could enjoy that on its own, possibly especially with how much of what's done here is practical. But at the same time, it's just, it's too fucking much, man. Yeah. Um, I'm just exhausted watching this. Yeah. I, like, every character in this, that like, it's, it's really ridiculous how in your face literally every single actor is in this movie. And <laughs> the way it's directed to, it's like, Look how in their face these people are. It's like always like that. It's like, the close-ups are disgusting. The 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 sound design is terrible in this movie. <laughs> the sound effects are too loud, and the the music's often competing with the actors' voices. And then they have the kids sing, and I'm sure she was doing her best, but she is not a singer. And it's weird that because of that, this like that's a new standard Christmas song now. Yeah. Um, that's that's just a weird thing in general. Um The um oh. the scene where they're like force feeding the Grinch and they're taking him through all the holiday festivities and, and stuff. Mm hmm That is like what this movie's like. Like being the Grinch in that scenario is what this movie's like. And don't get me wrong, like it's it's funny because there are some bits here and there that I do, like, legitimately get a laugh out of. Like, in that scene when they're feeding him all the stuff, and you just have one guy go, This is not pudding! And shove it in his mouth. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> and, like, in any other movie, that would have made me laugh my ass off. But here, I'm just, like, I'm so fucking done with it by the time that happens. <laughs> 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 and like it's really, you know, Jim Carrey's a really good actor. Honestly, I love how he reacts because if you look at his face when the dude says that, he's like, "What the fuck is it?" <laughs> <laughs> it's a real, it's a smarter scene than this movie deserves. Um, and there are other like some of the the more adult jokes I don't mind, but it's it's when they're like more of a, a cynical kind of joke, like. It's weird, two in a row with that, um, with that whole baby Grinch scene. You have the, the one, like, where he's, he's in the tree and you have the swinger party, but then you have before that, when, like, one of the babies lands and the guy's like, Hey, honey, it's a baby. Looks like your boss. Like, that's, that's so inappropriate, but, like, at the same time, later on in the, when the Grinch is, like, burning down the Whoville, and he tries to cut catch a taxi and like the thing just passes him by he's like it's because i'm green isn't it that's a funny line that's a, that's a good joke but i'm just so done with this movie this is one of those movies that builds up a debt for me um that like even when it does something i enjoy i can't i can't give it credit anymore it's too far gone in my opinion also i'll say this do we does this movie even need to exist no yeah i agree like for me, if I'm going to watch The Grinch, I'm going to watch the, the animated Grinch, or I'm going to read the fucking book. I don't want to watch yeah. the bullshit version of The Grinch with a bunch of just added shit that you don't need. It is so overdone. Like, do you really need a Grinch origin story? No. No, you don't. And so much of Dr. Seuss is in the telling of Dr. Seuss's stories, right? Yeah, it's all in the, the prose. Yeah, um... How do you think Anthony Hopkins did as the narrator? He's serviceable, fine, I guess. I don't know. Okay. No, I was just curious. Um, like, I, I kind of like Anthony Hopkins' voice as a narrator. It's weird. Morgan Freeman gets all the narrating gigs. Anthony Hopkins could use some more narrating gigs. <laughs> just generally. 
Morgan. Anthony Hopkins, I feel like, takes a lot of projects just for the money. Yeah. And so if he's just going to do that, he could maybe put his face on screen less and just, <laughs> you know, sit back and narrate some shit. Um, Why doesn't just, she have, like, a stupid who face like everybody else? The little girl? Because it doesn't look cute. Yeah. And they know that's, it. That's exactly the reason. She would not look cute with a stupid who face. She would look fucking terrifying. Ugh. Like, not to be ableist or whatever, but if I see someone's face look like that, I'm not spending time talking to you if I can avoid it, because... If you look like a who, get the fuck out! You go fucking haunt my nightmares, dude. Hell no. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. You know, physical disabilities, whatever, but, like, she's fucking... It's so creepy. It's It's unsettling. Like, I don't understand... You gotta think about it. It's not like... It's not like when we're talking about fan films, and it's just a small group of people who all decide, okay, this is the best we can do, and it actually looks kind of okay, so we're going to go with it for, like, a makeup effect or whatever, right? This is a major studio film, and so you have several layers of pre-production with concept sketches and all these other things to try to approve a single decision on what a consistent look for the people of this world are going to look like. And how many fucking people signed off on that? Yeah. You're going to tell me, like, fucking 90 people said, yeah, that looks fucking great. That's going to be so adorable. Kids are going to be, you know, wanting who toys for Christmas for years because of this movie. I wouldn't be surprised if kids got fucking nightmares from this movie. Like me. This movie scares <laughs> the shit out of me. It's horrifying. How, how old were you in 2000? Uh... Three? Jesus fucking Christ, Rasko. Four, maybe? Yeah, so you probably didn't see it until it was out on DVD. Man. Yeah. Still. Ugh. That's creepy. Now, weird, do you know off the top of your head if you saw this before the original Grinch movie? Uh, the, positive the that I watched the animated Grinch movie before this. Okay, that's good. I hate the idea that this movie would taint other people's ability to enjoy the good version. No, yeah. I I'm a fa- I'm a I'm a Seuss fan. <laughs> I'm a Seuss fan. One of my favorites is the story of the star-bellied sneeches and the not star-bellied sneeches. Oh. I I remember enjoying Hop on Pop. Um Green Eggs and Ham was a big one too. Green Eggs and Ham was, was a book he wrote on a bet, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, like I think it was his editor or publisher or something bet him he couldn't do a book with less than 50 words, and he did it. Um, huh. The name of his last book that he wrote wasn't like one of his normal Dr. Seuss books, was it? It was like this book about colors and like the emotions of the different colors, like... Um, I have no idea. Oh, okay. I remember my elementary school teacher, she uh, read that book to us one time, uh, and it was like, I think it was the last Dr. Seuss book that he wrote. Okay. Um, um, no, nah, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Um, anyway, back to the movie itself, with just the, like, it's weird, because I guess what they're trying to do is capture the look that he gave the who's in the book, but that that's just certain things don't translate yeah. Live action. That's an yeah. That's an example of like something that doesn't really make like. See, here's the thing. Like, I'm a big fan of when people make something work in a in a medium that it could only work in that medium, right? Like when you mm-hmm. tell a story in a specific way where you couldn't tell that story in uh, any other medium besides the one you're currently working in, right? And that's what Alan Moore always thinks he's doing, and he never is. <laughs> And that's why he hates all the adaptations of his movies, because it proves that, no, you fucking totally can. <laughs> and you don't even have to be that good a filmmaker. It's cough, cough, Zack Snyder. <laughs> um. <laughs> Damn, Ian, going in on him. Fuck Alan Moore. Oh, shit. <laughs> Alan Moore is a really talented writer, but a big asshole. Uh, day-to-day life. Anyway, go on with what you were saying. Um, but yeah, Dr. Seuss is a perfect example. It works in animation and it works in books and you could probably do it in like a 3d animation 
But this... they are actually, I, I believe they are doing another li- another Grinch movie, but it's going to be CG like the Lorax. See, well, that will probably work because that that I don't know, like yeah, like that that can that can work. This That's is just... Benedict Cumberbatch is rumored to play the Grinch. That would be awesome. That would be so great. Maybe I don't know. I think they. I have little faith in these adaptations because they rarely seem to get the fucking point. Um, particularly this one, like it, it, it so misses the point of what made how the Grinch stole Christmas work is he's, the Grinch is convinced that all the Who's care about are the presents and the food and, and the, the celebration of Christmas, not the, the point of the holiday itself. He can't even conceive of the idea that people would care about the point of the holiday itself beyond the presents and everything. So he's going to take that joy from them by stealing everything. And what shocks the hell out of him is he's completely wrong and Christmas doesn't come from a store and maybe Christmas means something more. And so it's these people that just enjoy the holiday for the sake of the holiday, enjoy the holiday for what it means truly and the, everything else is just dressing. And so that's what makes him turn. This it doesn't fucking do that. <laughs> it's like he steals the holiday and it gets the exact intended result. All he missed was stealing Cindy Lou Who and everyone else would have just been fucking miserable. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like the only thing that saves them and gets them back to the original message of the book is Cindy Lou. It's fucked up. <laughs> to just completely miss it. And then all the other fucking... Seuss adaptations basically do the same thing, even the Lorax to a degree. I mean, it's harder to fuck that one up, but they still manage it somehow. Um, yeah, all the other ones fucking, like, Cat in the Hat completely misses the point to which I don't even know if they understand that the book had a point. It's ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't particularly care for this movie. I find it kind of an insult to Dr. Seuss and the Grinch and for all the reasons we've discussed thus far. Uh, Rasko, what did you like about this movie? Nothing. <laughs> I'll wait for the actual answer. I don't... I, how... Jim Carrey is, is fine, and... It's... The... The... the the sets are constructed well. <laughs> Damn. That's, that's a, I can't think of like things I like about this film. I really don't like this movie. Is there a joke that actually landed for you? Um, I like the, the scene. While I will say the scene where they're just like, overbearing him with, like, all the Christmas festivities and shit. Mm-hmm. While I'll say that, like, scene is, like, how I describe my experience watching this movie, I still think that that scene is kind of amusing. Um, gotcha. And okay. That's kind of a I like a lot of the stuff where Jim Carrey's just off on his own. Yeah, and that's, yeah, that's, that's also true. Jim Carrey is just funny naturally when he just <laughs> thinks. Yeah, like, I love when he's sitting in the, in the, um chair and talking to his echo and like it's just I I love that absurdist kind of comedy I'm an idiot you're an idiot (laughs) I'm just gonna whisper some about the time my voice reverberates off the wall and gets back to me I won't be able to hear it you're an idiot I get that was really like absurdist humor really makes me laugh and then like he goes to rip the tablecloth off of the the table and, like, he does that perfect magician thing where nothing comes off. And then he, like, so he walks off screen. And then he walks back on screen and purposely knocks everything off the table. <laughs> like, that's really funny to me. And, like, there's there's other bits. Like, when he puts on the, the tablecloth and the dog's, like, it looks like a dress. He's, like, it's a kilt, sicko. And he, like, rips it off. He's got, like, a garter. That's funny to me. That That kind of stuff is legitimately hilarious. But it, it's I, I think it's in the wrong movie. Like you know what you know what this felt like. But then they like backed off on it at the last possible minute. Is it felt like they were making 
a really naughty parody of the Grinch. Yeah. Like, that was not meant for kids at all. And was meant to just be for, like, you know, grown-ups, basically, to, like, laugh at all the, the cliches and the stupidities and just have, like, a lot of really raunchy jokes um, centered around a story that would otherwise be for children. But then they backpedaled on it and decided to make it a kid's movie still because they decided that would sell better. Yeah. I feel like that's what we got. Yeah, that does kind of seem like a pretty a- accurate description. Um <laughs> And, and that would make sense. Like, yeah, this is not the kind of comedy, even if they had gone full adult, like, it, a lot of people would just get lost in translation, similar to, like, the Watchmen audience at that time, where it's, like, people saw Watchmen, they think superhero movie, and there were people that, like, I guess took their kids to that movie thinking that it was, like, a kid superhero <laughs> movie. It's just stupid, but it happens. I think that, like, if they had made this, like, a full-on adult comedy, there'd be a lot of people that are just like, well, it's the Grinch. Like, I'm not going to go watch that with, like, my friends thinking it's an adult comedy so like yeah like it's just like a overall miss because it's just really strange in general to even adapt this in a in any other way but for kids yeah yeah um again i i I think it'd be like i'm not gonna say you couldn't do it well in cg but i don't think any of seuss's stuff is really meant for proper films, like feature length. Yeah, films. and that's the thing that I would. That's where like, it's always just better to to watch Doctor Seuss or read Doctor Seuss because that's a much more accurate experience. Yeah, like I don't like I, I'm not gonna dismiss the idea of doing Doctor Seuss in CG, particularly because one of the really neat things about CG, just um, as an a unique art, is its ability to keep consistent volumetrics in animation. Because, like, one of the hardest things to do would be to hand-draw a train. Because, like, you'd need to keep a consistent shape, perspective lines, all that stuff, and animate that shit. That would be really fucking difficult. But you can do that with CG by just creating the fucking train, right? So it's a volumetric shape. Seuss has a lot of shit that's just really fucking interesting shapes, um, you know, kind of all connected together and stuff. Uh, you know, you'll have, like, bicycles that are meant for ten people yeah. and, and all these other weird contraptions and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it'd be neat to see Seuss animated in CG more, but not it's not meant story-wise for feature-length films. Yeah. So I think that's part of what the problem with a lot of these are, and also that a lot of these feature-length films don't really understand what the... They don't understand that the books have a point. <laughs> um, they think it's just general silliness, and to be fair, there's a lot of general silliness in Dr. Seuss, but there is still a, a very clear moral. It's just never... It's very rarely explicitly stated like a lot of kids' stuff that we're used to. Um, because, you know, here's a <laughs> radical idea. It gives kids credit. Yeah. Yeah, who, who would imagine? Um, so, like... I like the idea of doing How the Grinch Stole Christmas in CG, but I wouldn't want it to be a feature-length film. So yeah, I don't have any hope for a, a new adaptation of it. You could do, like, a, a couple Dr. Seuss stories and then do, like, a feature-length film that way, where it's, like, a anthology an of anthology? Dr. Seuss. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, um... The problem is the ones that you'd want wouldn't really fit together very well, I don't think, because... You'd want Cat in the Hat, and you'd want the Grinch, but, like, the Grinch is a Christmas thing. The Cat in the Hat is not, right? So you'd almost need, like, exactly what we already have with the original animations. You would need specifically made holiday specials, or, or like, one to run every quarter of the year. Um, and I don't, I don't think any studio is going to be really interested in that idea. So yeah, that's that's where I'm at. I don't like the idea of doing more adaptations because if they're gonna do them, they're gonna want to do them as feature length, and none of his stuff is meant to be that long because little kids learning to read using Dr. Seuss can't get through that much material. Uh, so he he knew that he was smart enough to know his audience when he was writing, so he didn't write shit that was super epically long. I think the longest thing he wrote as Dr. Seuss was Hop on Pop 
which as a kid that read Hop on Pop by his, uh, by himself at the right age for it, it took me a long ass time to get through. Um, I don't know. It's all, it's all fucking wacko, man. We need to treat Dr. Seuss with some respect. Yeah, bitch. Um, okay. You got anything else you wanted to say on this one? The less I have to talk about this movie, the better. Okay, here's a scene I just watched, right? I'm, I'm watching the movie with the audio off right now. Here's a scene. Why is this in this movie? Grinch comes out of that, like, tube part. You know when he, like, flies out of the tube? And mm-hmm. he, like, his face flies into her breasts? Yeah. Why is that in a, in a Dr. Seuss movie? Because they gotta put in jokes for adults. I don't know why. Like, there are certainly, you know, kids' movies where I'm perfectly okay with jokes for adults being put in them. This is not one of them. You know, like, yeah, like, that, that kind of joke happens in, like, Avengers Age of Ultron, where, like, Bruce Banner, like, his, like, he, they dive over a table, and he, like, falls into her, into Black Widow's breasts, and he's like, whoops, I'm sorry, and it's, it's funny, because he's, like, awkward about it, and it's really funny, but that's, like, a movie that is aimed at a wider audience, right? It's Avengers. Mm-hmm. This is the Grinch. It's like, what are you thinking? We're going to make the all-ages appropriate Grinch movie that'll just attract all audiences. Well, like, I, you know, I have to go back and re-watch it with subtitles, which I don't want to do. But, like, I'm pretty sure that when he is, like, when they're driving the sleigh down to at the end of the movie, I'm pretty sure he says the phrase bitchin' powder. Referring to how good the skiing is. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? So yeah, I don't I don't particularly care for this movie. Um, I know what I liked about it when I was younger, and that's all the crude humor. Um, <laughs> it's not appropriate for a Dr. Seuss movie, though. Okay. What do you rate this movie, Rasco? I give this movie a one stick of butter out of Five. Stick of butter. In the scenes where they're force feeding him, they shove like a full stick of butter in his mouth. Oh, I thought that was supposed to be fudge. Oh, maybe it is. I, it looks like butter. Mm. God. Okay. Um. I'm giving it a point five based solely on Jim Carrey's performance. Uh, and and the ordeal he had to go through to give it. Um, I'm going to give it 0.5 torture um, survival training sessions with the CIA. <laughs> Visualize that, everybody. Well, I'm going to change mine. I'm going to give mine one out of five horribly disturbing who faces out of five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. What are we talking about next time, Rasco? Oh, God. Holiday-themed? Yep. Oh, God. Christmas movie, or, or it doesn't have to be Christmas okay. movie. Okay. Um, can be another holiday. I'll pick a Christmas movie. Have you ever seen the Christmas movie Four Christmases? No. Okay. That's the movie I select. Okay. That should be fun, then. Everyone, thank you very much for listening. Uh, leave your comments on what you thought was the most terrifying thing about the Grinch. Uh, until next time, I'm the Philosopher. And I am the Walrus. And we are your geeky gentlemen. And we will be discussing things. Ho, 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 ho.